it's me, uh, Pastor Gretchen, and I'm here with my good friend, Dana Wright. And we are here to tell you a little bit about Consecration Sunday. For our stewardship emphasis this year, we're um, using a format called Consecration Sunday that will um, be concluded with joy and feasting on November 15th. So go ahead and mark your calendars for that. Um, one of the things that we would like to share about this process this year is that um, we're really hoping to emphasize each member of our church's need to grow spiritually together. Um, we all have this desire of this thing. And one of the ways that we do that is through giving. And I think that giving has to do with our own deep spiritual well-being. Um, and that's why Jesus talks about it so much um, throughout the Bible. It deepens our faith when we give. Um, it's often said that giving is indeed for the sake of the giver. And so today, uh, I want to invite our friend Dana to tell us a little story um, about uh, his relationship with stewardship. Take it away, Dana. Oh, thank you. This is nice to be able to do something uh, uh, for the generosity team. Yeah. Uh, I went to my 50th reunion last year, and I reconnected with a woman that I had known in high school, that we were friends, we did some skiing together. And we had a conversation about religion once, and she told me about her being raised in the Lutheran church. She told me a story about, about her, her faith journey and how during the middle part of her life, she had, she had gone, uh, some, some terrible things began to seep into the marriage. It started to go sour. And she was carrying a lot of burdens and she wrote me this paragraph. I just want to read it briefly because it's, it's the, the last phrase captured my attention. She says, in the middle of all this that was going on, I had a spiritual awakening involving a doe who had died trying to give birth at the apex of my mountain trail. Her body was still hot, eyes not glazed when I came upon her. I was in such anguish prior to finding her literally blocking my path that I dropped to my knees. I had an awakening. It was just what I needed. Mm. I was reminded of my own dear life, <laughs> saw it bathed in light. I remembered God knows and loves me. After crying for the deer and feeling transformed by gratitude, I returned to my house. Mm -hmm. That phrase just arrested me, transformed by gratitude. Sometimes we uh, we grow up in the church or don't grow up in the church, and we don't we, we, we don't really know how how deeply we've we've been addressed by God, but God is always at work. And this this story I thought was inspiring that in the middle middle of her life, this Lutheran woman could be renewed in such a powerful way and that she could be transformed by gratitude and what would that mean if all of us were transformed by gratitude what, how would we live if we lived in that kind of sense about being loved that deeply mm. um, and I think this is the the connection that we're trying to make with the generosity team is that the, the giving is uh not a, not a matter of being altruistic or being uh, helpful. It's, it's a response to the deep gratitude that comes to us when we awaken to the presence of, of Jesus. So I'm hoping that this story will be inspiring to you in your own journey. Thank you so much, Dana. That is a beautiful yes. story. I'm deeply grateful. And I'm sure we can look forward to more stories um, over the coming weeks. Okay. as we move through generosity season. So thank you so much again. I'll talk to you thank soon, Gina. Okay, thank you. Bye.